particularly thank um, Congressman Cleaver for taking the time to be a part of this virtual town hall. Um, the Congressman has been um, a great friend of the chamber um, for, for a very long time. And his leadership, particularly in this time of crisis is, is greatly appreciated by I know everyone in this virtual town hall today. Just a little bit of background. I think all of us know Congressman Cleaver, probably personally, those that are in this call, but um, uh, Congressman Cleaver first began his political career in Kansas City, serving on the Kansas City um, City Council from 79 to 91. And from then until 1999, he was uh, mayor of Kansas City, Missouri, um, and did an amazing job with his leadership there. In 2004, he was elected for the first time to the U.S. House of Representatives for Missouri's 5th Congressional District. And he has held that position since that time. Uh, since being in the House, the Congressman has served on the House Committee on Financial Services, where he chairs the Subcommittee on National Security, International Development, and Monetary Policy. And he's a member of the Select Committee on the Modernization of Congress and does such a phenomenal job of representing this Kansas City that we all call home. Congressman, great to see you here. Great to hear your voice. Thank you for being a part of this today. The floor is yours. Thank you, uh, President. Uh, let, let me first of all thank you uh, for um, all of the years of, of, of being interested and, uh, in and working towards the, the further development of our metropolitan area. And uh, it's it's working. I, I was telling my wife, and I, I you know sometimes comparisons uh, are, are not necessarily good. But uh, in 1950, St. Louis was the seventh largest city in the United States of America. Uh, today, we're almost twice the size of St. Louis, uh, and we have already passed the 500,000 population mark. I'll, I'll say some more about that uh, as it relates to the CARES Act. Uh, but uh, uh, obviously, that, that this didn't happen accidentally. It happened because of the, uh, the work of people like uh, the Chamber. And of course, uh, we've had a stream of very good uh, national and, and local leaders. Um, not the least of, of whom is uh, uh, Dick Bowling, uh, Tom Eagleton, J uh, Jack Danforth, and my uh, very close and dear friend, uh, Christopher Bond, Kit Bond. Um, I'm not going to go too much over uh, the, the, the CARES Act because I think uh, my, pre my uh, kid, uh, I think at least I've been told that Roy Blunt has already uh, spoken with you. Uh, and so uh, I'll, I would uh, just uh, pick up maybe where they left off. Um, I, I had a, a long conversation day before yesterday, a Zoom a meeting with the county executive uh, and the mayor and the chair of the finance, the city finance committee, uh, and um, uh, and I, I guess the, the chief of staff for the county executive. Uh, the, the purpose of the meeting is to give them an idea of where we are. Uh, and it's not a pretty picture, uh, but uh, the uh, US economy uh, has uh, fallen down to about 4.8%. And uh, that's uh, a, a, such a dramatic fall uh, that it represents the sharpest decline uh, since 2008 uh, when we had the economic collapse. The difference is, we can't blame banks or uh, any individual for this. Uh, this is a, a, an, a, 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 an epidemic uh, that uh, has decimated our economy. Uh, the GDP now is, if you can understand this, it's in the minus category. It's 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 hits the floor and it's going the other direction. Uh, Goldman Sachs, as as you guys probably know, uh, re will release a, a, a report. Uh, every month, sometimes they do it uh, quarterly, uh, but their latest report, if you want to look, take a look at it, uh, they say that unemployment nationally could uh, hit between 16 and 20%. Uh, 16% uh, is, would be higher than the depression uh, in the 1930s. Uh, and so that gives you an idea of how, how uh, rough it is right now. Uh, Jerome Powell, uh, Jerome Powell, the, the Fed reports to the, to the committee I chair, subcommittee I chair, uh, and uh, I, I thank God have, have developed a very good relationship over the, over the years. A lot of times the, 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 the committee that I chair is always at war with the Fed, 
because they want to control the Fed. They want uh, to tell this independent agency how to act and when to raise interest rates and so forth. Uh, but uh, you know, they have a dual mandate, the Fed, uh, and they, they deal with uh, employment and inflation. Uh, sometimes, like now, they, they get involved into uh, kind of a new, new areas. Uh, but uh, I, I have a great deal of, of uh, trust in Jerome Powell, and as I've said in Washington publicly, and, and when he was uh, when I was introducing him, uh, I, I said that you know every Fed chair that I've had the chance to to know uh, has been brilliant. Uh, Jerome Powell uh, is the only one who speaks English, uh, and so I, I have a special appreciation for him. Um, and so uh, he he has said. Uh, that the, the second quarter uh, will be worse than uh, the, the last quarter, uh, than the first. Uh, and he says that, th that this is the, and I quote, worst economy in U.S. history, not modern history, but U.S. history period. Uh, and so uh, I, I told the city council and the county executive that uh, they needed to be thinking uh, futuristically. Uh, and, and they didn't have the opportunity to think to, to spend a lot of time uh, you know, wasting on, it, on anything else. And the reason I say that is, look, um, uh, they can get ready for the fact that sales, sales tax revenues are, are going to just go down just so dangerously uh, that many of the things that they've been um, funding with that, uh, like infrastructure, uh, is going to suffer dramatically. They're not going to get uh, the, the the revenue that they would normally get from uh, the car rentals at the airport. That's that's gone. Um, uh, the earnings tax revenue. You can just think about this. Uh, there, there are no earnings right now, uh, at least for a great portion of the people in the community. Uh, and uh, even even the property tax issues. You, we're going to have, unfortunately, and it pains me to say, we're going to have. Uh, we're going to be hit with a lot of foreclosures uh, in um, uh, in Kansas City and around the area. Uh, one economist uh, said to our committee uh, that uh, their estimate is that somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of the of minority small businesses will never come back. Uh, that, that that they have been they they uh, have been hit so hard they can't return. I've had a number of town hall meetings with uh, barbers and hairstylists and cosmetologists, uh, almost none of whom received any of the uh, funding from the CARES Act, in spite of the fact that we argued uh, and thought we had won the argument with Treasury uh, to, to, to make sure that this last alloc allocation went to small businesses. So we were able to get uh, you know, $60 uh, billion that was supposed to be going directly to small businesses. They didn't get it, uh, uh, or a large number of them didn't get it. And there are reasons for it. Uh, number one, uh, if you are running a small business, let's say you're running a, a hair salon, uh, you may have uh, perfected your skills in doing that, but the chances are you don't have an HR department uh, and you don't have a legal department to which you can assign responsibilities uh, to file to to go and uh, go to your bank, which you also probably don't have, and where you don't have a line of credit, but you go to your bank and try to work out uh, the loans uh, with the SBA. So consequently, uh, most of those uh, businesses are are are, are gone. Uh, I think, or many of them are gone. They just can't survive. They didn't even qualify for uh, the unemployment benefits because. Uh, they are considered to be independent employees, uh, employers, uh, and so um, uh, we are looking at a at a community uh, that will struggle even after we get the coronavirus uh, under, under some kind of control. Um, and uh, I, our committee uh, has the XM Bank in its uh, jurisdiction, so I've just had a, a town hall meeting with the XM Bank. Uh, board, uh, and uh, they are in trouble. Uh, the, the, it's a relatively new board. Uh, Kimberly Reed from West Virginia is the new chair, and uh, they uh, they have 
an authorization to exist until 2026. But they're the people who fund operations all over the country uh, or make loans to, to, for American corporations to compete with foreign uh, uh, entities. For example, Boeing has to compete with Airbus. Uh, and Airbus is German and French and some other uh, country involved in it. Uh, and so we've been we have we've been we making loans to to, to Boeing out of St. Louis uh, to uh, help them uh, remain competitive. Now uh, most people would say, well, what does it have to do with us? A lot of their suppliers, I think we have about thirty something suppliers to Boeing, uh, which is an XM bank in our in 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 the metropolitan area. So uh, it, it's important to all of us. We don't we we don't hardly of think about that uh, and. Um, I think right now the problem is even if the zone the coronavirus uh, disappears tomorrow, we we have to rebuild the confidence of the uh, of the American consumer. It doesn't exist now, and we saw it uh, yesterday um, in in my hometown. Uh, well, I'm, I'm from Waxhatchee, but it's it's almost in downtown Dallas, and and. Uh, and, and, and they opened up some of the restaurants and nobody went in. And uh, frankly, I'm not sure that I would go in. Um, so the consumer confidence is not there. And that's why some of us have, uh, have said, look, we need to wait uh, and build up the confidence because if you open up, you're gonna pay the, the cost of opening up and no customers are coming in. You're gonna be in worse, uh, worse shape. The other I issue that I think uh, the chamber uh, is probably concerned about, or, or it's going to come, or it's going to come to your attention. That is, um, you know, the the um, I mean, attorneys are already lining up to file suit uh, against company uh, against corporations or uh, entities, uh, restaurants too, where uh, if if someone comes in and gets infected, uh, there are going to be a lot of lawsuits. Now, uh, you know, you want want Congress to pass some law that says that you can't file suit, that's going to be a, a battle uh, in, in Washington. Um, and so we are putting another whole uh, new uh, area of conflict. I'll end up uh, by, by just saying some people are, have argued that this is going to be a V-shaped recovery. That we bounce right back up. I need to tell you that I wish we could do it, that were, were true. Every economist uh, that we have uh, coming before our committee uh, is saying something that's quite different, including uh, Jerome Powell, the chair, uh, the uh, Fed chair, uh, that, that it's not going to rebound like that. And um, even though we, 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 we've been able to get uh, some co cooperation from the big banks and, and mortgage companies uh, that, that uh, you know, they, they've not, uh, you know, filed bankruptcy. Uh, the problem is is going to hit us later because even if they can't file bankruptcy for two more months, uh, uh, if they can't, I'm sorry, if they can't uh, uh, foreclose, uh, and we we put this whole new forbearance clause into every entity in the country, but at the end we, we're finding out that they're saying, okay, we we uh, we forgave you for the last three months, now we want uh, three months uh, money, and so that's going to cause a, because a lot of people are not. Going to be able to do, to do it, and so that's another cataclysm uh, that that's uh, on our, our radar screen. So we're now trying to get uh, another package together. Uh, this is going to be uh, heavily um, uh, uh, leaning toward infrastructure. I actually support that. Uh, um, uh, the president supports that. Uh, Nancy Pelosi supports that. However, in politics, you got to you know you get what you can and. Uh, some some things are, are not negotiable, um, and so we are. Um, we believe that that we've got to bail out the cities, uh, and uh, states, and and uh, and counties. And I know nobody wants to have a trillion dollar uh, uh, debt, uh, but uh, I don't know what we do um, uh, if we just say let the states foreclose. Uh, because that's going to almost destroy uh, every city in the, in that state economically if they're not already destroyed. 
uh, but we, you know, uh, I would support a trillion dollar uh, infrastructure, uh, but, um, and I made this clear, in, in, in all over my district, which runs from uh, Excelsior Springs, uh, 100 to almost 140 miles away, to Slater, Missouri, uh, Slater, Marshall, Higginsville, uh, Spring, uh, uh, May Mayview, Oak Grove, uh, Richmond, uh, Sweet Springs, uh, and we're in a situation where um, you know, the, the, the small towns are, are experiencing a great deal of, of pain as well, and all of them want infrastructure help. <clears throat> but if I don't, if, if I don't know uh, where the infrastructure dollars are going to be spent uh, as it relates to my district, uh, or whether or my, not my district is even going to get it, uh, then might be a, 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 a vote too far for me. Uh, I don't want to vote on something and then, uh, you know, uh, run into the president of the chamber who says, hey, what about the, uh, you know, the Buck O'Neill Bridge? Or, you know, what, you know, what about this? What about, you know, uh, and, and, and what I'm saying is being said by members all over the country. They're not going to vote on this bill. Everybody knows we need it, but nobody wants to get tricked. And uh, uh, the people in St. Louis are my friends, I, I, you know, however, for whatever reason, historically, the money always has tended to lean towards St. Louis. We're twice their size, um, both in terms of geography and population. Um, and I don't want this to lean toward the east, west, and north coast either. So uh, that's going to be a challenge, uh, uh, and, and maybe we can get by it uh, because I can't vote, uh, and I don't know where how my constituents are going to benefit for it. So I, that that's that's about it. I uh, appreciate you listening to my rambling, but uh, I'll respond to any of your questions or concerns. Congressman, your staff tells us you have a hard stop at 10, so I'm going to try to get through these four or five questions sure. um, here. So, and as you can imagine, everyone wants to know about the next round, and you've addressed that. One thing I didn't hear you mention, I have a question here, is, is do you see opportunity for relief to larger nonprofits, nonprofits larger than 500 employees in the next round. Is that being talked about at all? Yes, the, uh, uh, we, we have to include the, the, the not for profits because, well, I, I, we, I'll try to do short answers. Uh, the, uh, there is a whole group of us uh, trying to include not for profits and most particularly food banks. Uh, we're going to have to f fund food banks at a level that we've never thought. Uh, I'm going to tell you this, and this is painful. I saw a member, uh, a former member of the city council in a food line. Um, I, you know, and it, it almost made me cry. And, I, and, and this council member was trying to not, trying to move so that I couldn't see, um, but I, it, was, it was absolutely terrible. Um, and so we're going to have to fund not, not for profit. We, we need them now, perhaps more than ever. Catholic charities, for example, uh, harvesters for sure. There are many people on this call that um, are pleased to hear you say that. Thank you, Congressman. Um, the next question is, um, uh, what do we know about the second round of paycheck protection funds? Have they been exhausted or do we know how far we're into them. Is there any talk about a third round of PPP? We, yes, the, 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 the funds are almost gone. Uh, and the problem is that uh, we, put, we sent those money, monies to the state, which is the, because they handle unemployment benefits. Uh, but the states are overwhelmed. Would you like to pivot to the next question, just because I know your time is so close. Um, you will not be, you will know who this comes from, but it actually comes from everyone in Kansas City. Thank you for your recent letter to the Kansas City Star supporting the U.S. Postal Service. Do you see any opportunity to include meaningful stabilization in the next round of COVID? COVID uh, we were able to, to make a loan out of the, uh, the, the last legislation to the Postal Service. Um, the president 
um, and some others would like to, uh, pardon the pun, stamp it out. Um, but uh, the uh, I'm, I'm getting uh, support now coming in, people calling me from all over the country, uh, saying that um, that they are going to be supportive. So, uh, you know, we're going to have, we, we have to bail them out or, or it's going to be destroyed. Uh, and they, they don't have much time. Uh, and it's one of the, one of the, the worst things that, that we've ever done to intentionally try to destroy a, an organization that has been around uh, almost since the founding of the country. So uh, uh, rural uh, members of Congress are now stepping up and, and speaking out saying, go on to the next question. Thank you for your support of the U.S. Postal Service. We heard you said you want to lead the debate on the floor, and we appreciate that. The next question is, would you um, please clarify your comments regarding foreclosures? According to an interagency statement from the National Banking Regulators, regulators will not require, well, this is very intense. Um, can you just clarify your statement on uh, foreclosures? What do you see there? What we did, uh, the Secretary of the Treasury, Steven Mnuchin, sent out communications uh, to the banks, uh, asking them for forbearance. And for the most part, uh, I, I was uh, in a meeting with some of the uh, bankers, uh, including uh, Bank of America here in Kansas City, and they, and they are complying to the request. We can't pass a law saying thou shall not foreclose, uh, but uh, most of them have complied with the request. Uh, and so, to my knowledge, we have not had any uh, housing foreclosures. I don't, I, I, I don't know. I've not heard of any uh, foreclosures on um, on banks or corporations either. But uh, if somebody knows of some of those that have happened, I'm very anxious to to hear about that. Uh, and get information about it because uh, I, I think we could probably get something like that reversed quickly with uh, with Mnuchin. Wonderful. Uh, uh, just for clarification, this um, question asker says, um, uh, is there any intention to require banks to classify these loans as substandard? Is that, is that, are they looking at that? Not at all. No. Wonderful. I appreciate that. And then, uh, Congressman, um, uh, you, you had mentioned in the next round or subsequent rounds, you're supporting infrastructure. There are a lot of people on the call that, that really thank you for that. Funds to cities and states, as, as you know, our DOTs have been, will be decimated by the lack of people traveling and not uh, buying uh, gas. So, so a lot of concern about that. Do you see this stretching out over multiple relief packages, or do you? Th it's already multiple, but do you see one more potentially, or or could there be one or two more? Well, what we're calling uh, stimulus 4.0 um, is um, uh, going to be a tough pull, um, and but um, the the reality is that. Uh, we're going to have difficulty, political difficulty, getting anything else uh, after this next package. But to be sure, uh, we, we have the need has, is not going to diminish because we're going to have uh, major economic problems going into the next uh, next year based on the economists. Thank you. We have one. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. We have one more question. Do you have time to take that, Congressman? Sure. Thank you so much. And again, we have a lot of nonprofits on the call and, and they appreciate the support that you've been giving them. Um, this final question is, we are having significant issues getting guidance on the paycheck protection for nonprofits. The language for a paycheck protection loan um, shows eligibility for nonprofits but no direct language, evidently no direct language, whether nonprofits can qualify using the alternative method like small businesses can. 
I hope you're following me. Um, how can we go about getting clarification when we cannot get it directly from the SBA? Uh, we can get uh, uh, clarification from Treasury. Treasury, uh, uh, to, to be clear, it was Treasury, Mnuchin, uh, and uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, who negotiated the deal. Uh, and, it, and we, uh, we have uh, had to make phone calls to, to Treasury uh, almost every day because we, we've been trying to avoid, uh, uh, pre trying to um, preempt any kind of conflict between Jackson County and the city of Kansas City, Missouri. It's a long story and you probably don't have time to listen to it, but uh, the city didn't get a direct uh, allocation, the county did. But uh, we have to, you know, on, on, on things like that, we have to call Treasury and say, um, you know, here's the situation, give us a ruling. And so that's what we'll, we would have to do in, in this situation. We've had problems with the non -for -pro non, no, not for profits. Uh, some of them in some places have gotten uh, the, the payroll protection uh, money. Uh, other places they haven't. It's, it's uh, you know, it's not running smoothly. Uh, so uh, we, what, what we've done, uh, um, I mean, I had I have a college that had a problem. Uh, we finally think we worked it out. Uh, but, you know, it may, it may take three or four weeks to work out a, a situation with one institution. Uh, but that's what we, uh, we uh, I mean, that's why I was elected. So uh, we, we, we'll respond uh, to, to any of the calls. I have nobody in our office. Uh, uh, Whitney goes in and maybe stays three or four hours, and we have people taking the calls out, and we are responding, and, and we meet every day at 3 o'clock on Zoom. So uh, if, if, if there's some specific uh, not-for-profits, uh, then we might have to deal with them in, you know, individually with the Department of Treasury. Thank you, Congressman. I just want to say on behalf of the Chamber and um, all the callers today, we are um, encouraging you to be safe, to be careful. I know that you are because we are so pleased that you are up in DC or at home now um, representing this area. We value the way you're looking um, at business, you're, the way you're handling our nonprofit sector. And um, on behalf of the chamber, I will just say, we so appreciate your support for the minority owned businesses because the KC chamber believes that um, we can do nothing but an inclusive recovery. And if we don't recover in an inclusive way, probably unlike what happened in 2008, that will not be good for anyone in Kansas City. So thank you for your leadership on that issue. Thank you for being with us today. Let me, let me just say, uh, just so you know, I've been working for months now with the, the Black Chamber, the Hispanic Chamber, and the LGBT Chamber, forming a what we call a tri-chamber. And we're going to try to get money uh, so that the three can be housed together uh, and work together. We need a, we need a, a group like that to help the minority uh, uh, companies and the small companies n uh, navigate all of the federal bureaucracy that's required when they're going after these dollars. And all three chambers have voted to form this. I mean, they'll still be independent, but they'll be together with the call the tri chamber. Uh, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll try to get with uh, with you guys to give you more information about it. Uh, we would appreciate that, and I think that sounds wonderful. We have enjoyed our relationships with all of them and the Asian American Chamber as well. And um, I think that sounds great. So again, thank you for that. That's critical to Kansas City. You always recognize that. Congressman, um, thank you so much. Be well, and we hope to have you back in a, in a month or two. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Congressman. Take care. Absolutely.